Welcome to another Brown Connect alumni video conversation. I'm Maya Mandata, a peer career advisor at Career Lab, and I will be talking with Raleigh De Dekova, class of 2014, who works as a public health practitioner at Population Services International. Thank you so much for doing this, Raleigh. Um, so I just wanted to begin by asking you to walk me through your current jobs and some of your main responsibilities. Hi, Maya, thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so I am at PSI. It's an international organization uh, that's present in almost, uh, well, in over 60 countries. And the, the country that I'm in currently, uh, I'm in the Kingdom of Eswatini in Southern Africa. And uh, I'm the role I play is a HIV self-testing program manager. So the, the, the role that I've been sort of hired to take on is, is, is twofold. One is to uh, oversee the HIV self-testing implementation at PSI, so within the different organization, uh, organizational um, activities and the different programs and how it can be well integrated. And then also uh, to support at national level for um, scaling up HIV self-testing because it's relatively new to the country um, with, for example, the only, the first pre-qualified um, WHO pre-qualified product coming into effect uh, just only a couple of years, uh, a few years ago, and um, self-testing itself coming to Swaziland, now Eswatini, um, in 2017 or so. So it's still like in the early um, phases, and uh, part of my role is to help um, transition that and scale that up and just provide whatever technical assistance the, the Ministry of Health would need. So it's on, on, on two different tiers. So in terms of scaling this project up, what does your typical day look like? Uh, yeah, so with, the, with a, a typical day, the nice thing is there is no typical day and that's one of the things I really like about the program and my, and my work, but it will be, I guess, split into three, I would say. So the one would be like day-to-day -day operations. Does a team have enough stock? Um, do they need assistance from um, office level to maybe gain entry to a certain place? Um, any kind of miscellaneous things that could come up with the day-to-day -day operations. And then the other uh, part of it would be the more strategic analytical part where um, I'd be thinking of ways to either expand it or make the program better or make certain aspects of the self-testing programs but um, also um, the constant monitoring and evaluation that that um, you have in, in, pro in projects um, to assess if it's still going well if they if there are gaps and so on and then the other part would be kind of setting up meetings with different stakeholders attending different um, meetings that I'm invited to or impromptu ones that come up uh, which can happen quite a lot over here um, uh, again, for like both um, national level um, discussions, but also sometimes um, partner to partner discussions or um, just at, at different levels, at different meetings. Okay, that sounds amazing. Um, you mentioned that you really like the flexibility and that no day is the same, but how besides that did you decide that this kind of work was a good fit for you? Well, for me, uh, I, I think it would always have had to be a, a trial and error thing. I didn't know exactly what it is that I wanted to do after my uh, master's in global health. So I knew I wanted to be back home. So this is where I grew up. Um, I wanted to also be somewhere where I'm closer to the beneficiaries of the programs that are being implemented rather than in some cases where let's say if I stayed in the West, um, it's more to do with um, managing the funds or managing the portfolios and so on. I, I, I wanted to be closer to the ground basically. So I knew that that's sort of what I went into this knowing. Other than that, um, it was sort of uh, a bit of experimentation to see what it is that uh, that really would have fit well for me and then it turned out to be a good experiment because I really do enjoy this this type of work where it's 
multifaceted, working at different levels, many different tasks, uh, various stakeholders at different levels. Um, definitely can't get bored. That sounds great. Is there anything you wish people knew about the work or that the, any like misunderstandings or misperceptions about the work that you do? Uh, yeah, I think, I think a lot of people aren't really sure exactly what global health is um, or public health um, for that matter. And even like trying to explain it in my native language, Bulgarian, it's even harder because it's, um, it's many things. And so when you say you're working in public health or global health, it can mean anything from um, service delivery to what I'm doing, program management to um, from the policy side, but more on a public health perspective. Um, again, more like on the research side, but still in public health. So um, yeah, public health, global health can just mean many different things. And um, I think if someone's interested in it, it would just depend on what angle that they would want to take. So kind of related to that, do you have advice for any students who are interested in either public health or global health as a career? Um, are there any like classes they should take, summer internships they should try to have, or should they be going to grad school? Well, yeah, I think it also depends sort of on US versus Europe versus the rest of the world, but I do see more of a trend of more and more people um, doing that more specialized master's degree. Having, having done it, uh, I see that it's useful in that it, it uh, sends a signal out to someone who's looking at your resume that this is something that you're interested in. But I don't think it's um, absolutely necessary for you to have that kind of a degree to, um, to get into this kind of work. I did do some health-related internships while at Brown and during my master's degree as well. And I think those are helpful to the to the extent that you do get exposure uh, to one aspect and you might then decide that's not the kind of public health I'd, I'd like to be involved in, but it also um, sends a signal to someone who might be looking at your resume or that, or that might be wanting to hire you that, um, that, that you're interested in that, that kind of um, work. Um, I didn't take any public health classes at Brown, but but I did do an internship at the Rhode Island Hospital um, for like a research related internship. Um, and so, yes, uh, these things, I think they, they, they then show up on your resume and um, can strengthen it in that way. But again, I think uh, you can approach public health with like a, from a policy perspective or um, maybe you studied stats, but you really want to apply your statistical knowledge to public health um, work. Uh, yeah, that's my take on it. Do you have advice for anyone who isn't quite sure about what they want to do after graduation? I know you said you weren't sure like what angle of public health or what area you were necessarily interested in. So if someone's not sure what to do after their bachelor's degree, Yes, specifically in public health, like if they're not sure what area they want to work in, do you have any advice for them? Ah, um, so for myself, I almost immediately, not immediately, but not, uh, but almost immediately went into studying for my master's, maybe about, well, about a year after. And I don't think that's, Especially in the States, if you're going to stay in the States, I know many people who just um, went on to do uh, public health work um, straight after their, their, their Brown degree. And, and then afterwards sort of deciding that they wanted to do an MPH or um, other health related degree. Um, I mean, there are many options. And the nice thing is about, uh, about the States is that there are many options for bachelor's only students for students who just have their bachelor's degree to, to do meaningful work in public health. Um, for, for me, my experience was going to Europe and it was a bit of a different scenario where I wasn't able to be as competitive mm -hmm. on the job market um, because of a lack of a master's degree for the kind of work that I would have wanted to do. Um, so, I mean, if you're in the States, yeah, you, I think it shouldn't be hard to, to find um, uh, something that's within public health because again the field is so broad but also 
if people aren't sure, I mean, that's what Brown Connect is for as well, to like uh, connect students to, um, to alumni or to, well, yeah, mainly, mainly alumni, I guess. Um, like myself, I, I was doing that a lot, even before Brown Connect um, with other options that the Korea Lab gave. So just like, I've always found it valuable to talk to people who have walked that path before. Um, looking back, how did you find your first job after graduation? So this is, I guess, in your case, would be more after you got your master's, but what do you think was really helpful in finding your first job? Well, for me, it was um, same thing as I was just saying, is like talking to people who had either worked here or had experience here or knew, or knew people here who work in public health. Uh, that was very, very valuable for me, if, if not only learning about the public health landscape here in Eswatini, but also um, getting advice on if there's specific organizations to reach out to or people to reach out to. Um, the networking part has always been something that's been really valuable for me um, over the years. And, and with finding a job as well, if not directly, like uh, it did definitely indirectly lead to, to me finding a job. In addition to networking, do you think there was any other tactics you used that were really effective in helping you find a first job? Um, I, I, and maybe not at the first job, but other opportunities as well. Like uh, I've, it is kind of like networking, but uh, reaching out blindly to people who you don't know. I've done that before as well, and, and a lot of people are really just willing to help you find out more information. So I would do that where I'd become really interested in a company and find out who would work there and um, uh, find out who works there and then reach out to them. And if they were open to talking, to talk. Um, I get, that is sort of networking in a way as well. Of course, I did the traditional applications as well. And I think those, those of course, are very helpful because for some organizations, for example, you could um, know people there or network or, um, or be referred, but you still need to uh, go through the normal application process. So it's always been a mix for me. I don't rely on one method over, over, over another. Okay, thank you. Um, a couple last questions. What do you think some of the things you learned about yourself after your first job were that were things you didn't know about yourself when you had just graduated? Uh, well, at a very um, basic <laughs> uh, point is that I discovered after starting to work in an open work space that an open workspace is not for me. I guess it depends um, on, on, on the culture of the place, but uh, if, it's, if it's any sort of a noisy um, open work plan, then I just can't get some of the kinds of work done that I need to, like more of the concentrating analytical, I mean, I, then I use my tactics of earplugs or, or whatever, but it's not, it's not ideal. So, I mean, you don't know that until you, you, you start, even in the interview, um, my former boss was like, well, how do you feel about an open work? And I'm like, well, um, probably okay. But uh, it turned out to be not so okay. So I'm now finding ways to cope with that. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess they, they things like that you, the, the kinds of characteristics or skills you think you have until you really um, are put to the test with them. Like um, in general, I thought I was always very um, kind of, what, what am I trying to say? Like basically I found out that I'm not um, always as politically correct or um, politically sensitive or culturally sensitive um as as i thought i would having gone to international high schools and international um you know well brown being very international and so on but um yeah there's no sort of one size fits all um for that and so uh i realized like there needs to be a bit more nuance in my interactions with uh people from different cultures 
Do you have any tips for people to kind of develop that nuance or to get some of that experience while at Brown? Hmm, well, I mean, Brown is so culturally rich and diverse and um, yeah, if, if, if you know that you're, you're targeting a particular part of the world that you want to go to, it would help um, exposing yourself um, to or trying to meet people from there or, or asking about that part of the world um, rather than going in blindly. Mm -hmm. But I think that's kind of common knowledge. But I guess a lot of people will use the internet these days, but Brown is, um, Brown can provide that opportunity to an extent. Um, yeah, more on the cultural thing, it's, 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 uh, it's tricky to be an international worker uh, in, in a place or in a workspace that's dominantly from with people from um, the local area or and uh, yeah you I think you just really need to work on how you're perceived and how how you put yourself out there because they, they are I mean these um, stereotypes of like the foreigner coming to I don't know fix the place are I've, I've, I've sensed them around here not necessarily in response to myself but um, we do have a lot of international um, workers here, so it's yeah, it's uh, very important to be um, particularly cult culturally sensitive when you're in someone else's country. Is there anything else you want to add that you think students would find helpful? You know, I, the, just on the networking part, I think it's um, when you first kind of hear about it, and I think a lot of people hear about it in um, in college, I guess, May maybe in high school, but it's not as important then, I don't think. It's like, it becomes one of these um, kind of catchphrases or like these hot hot uh, topic, hot words that are, are thrown around and, and everyone is kind of like, what's that and how, how do I perfect that? But, um, or, or a lot of people I think run away from it, which is the more common um response that i've seen amongst my friends and, and peers and so on but um through practice and like through just doing it doing it more and not expecting too much and realizing that it's it's not like a scientific basically it's not a it's not it's not a guaranteed or proven way to get um anything right then and there but as a concept it is i don't know i think it's just what I'm trying to say is it's good to get comfortable with it and um, and just like accept that it's one of the ways that the world works and even in, in not only um, for finding jobs but for um, getting stuff done within your job or, or gaining entry to, to a certain place or um, space the way you need to do your job and, and even like non-job related um, just to get comfortable with that which I kind of realized over the years. Yeah, thank you. That's definitely such an important thing, figuring out networking and all of that. So any anything else you want to add or? No, no, that's it. Okay, thank you all for watching this edition of Career Lab's Brown Connect alumni video conversation with Raleigh Dekova. We hope to see you next time. Thank you, Raleigh.